You're welcome to another edition of Victor Isibo Reviews. If it's your first time here, consider hitting the red subscribe button, turn on the notifications so that you don't miss my subsequent videos. And if you are a returning, it's always a pleasure having you here. In this video, I want to talk about savings. I know I've talked a lot about savings, but you cannot overemphasize savings as regards your finances, okay? Because it is harder to keep money than to make money. So if we talk about making money and we're not talking about keeping the money, we're not doing much. And as I said in one of my earlier videos, the difference between a rich man and a wealthy man is that a wealthy man is a rich man who has figured out a way to keep his money, okay? So keeping money is very important. Now, back to the main topic, savings. Why should we save? Savings gives you financial security. It puts your mind at rest. You know, when you're feeling down, you're feeling gloomy sometimes, and you just remember your account balance and you just smile. Okay? It's a beautiful feeling when you know that financially you're covered. Okay? That's the feeling that savings gives you. Okay? Savings number two gives you uh, freedom. Okay? It gives you uh, the opportunity. To decide what you want to do and what you don't want to do now you don't have to take that slave job just because of the money you do less and less things because of money you do them more because of your passion because your principles align with it okay you don't do things that you don't want to do just because of money so you know money gives you that freedom to choose and to decide what you want to do with your life and it's a wonderful feeling where you have freedom okay then number three, savings gives you the opportunity to take calculated risk. Okay, when you have backup funds, it will give you the motivation for you to want to try new investment opportunities because you know that, okay, you have enough money to cushion the effect of loss of that investment. You'll be fine. You will not starve when you lose. Okay, now, for instance, now, um, a business opportunity shows up after doing your uh, due diligence and stuff. If you decide, for instance, to invest five million, five million is a lot of money. OK, but maybe you have 50 million in your savings. That means you're trying this new business with just 10 percent of your money. OK, so five million in comparison to 50 million is small money. But when you're not comparing it with any money, it's big money. So when you go into that investment, you're going into that investment with big money. If it yields returns, 5 million is going to yield plenty of returns for you. Okay? In that term, in that, in that sense, it's big money. But if you lose that money, you have backup funds of 45 million. It's not the end of the world. So you see, when you have enough savings, it gives you the, the, the room to try new things. It gives you uh, the opportunity. It, give, it cuts you some slack. You can make mistakes. You can learn from your mistakes and recover. Okay. So these are the things that savings can do for you. Okay. So now we have discussed why we should save. Now let's discuss some psychological tricks, some life hacks that can help you to save. Now we're going to how to save. Okay. I'm going to share some very quick tips, like eight different tips that can teach you um, how to save, that can help you to save. Number one is visualize your wealthy future, okay? Think about why you need to save. You have to have a motivation. Why do you want to save? You want to be the next Warren Buffett, okay? You want to be, you want to be the next richest man in your community, in your city, in your state. Visualize it. Visualize what you want to do with money. Visualize the kind of lives, the amount of lives you want to touch when you make money. It helps you to save more. It gives you the motivation to save, okay? So when you visualize it, that is like the motivation for you to save. These and these and this is what I want to do. You have to have a plan. It is that plan that will drive you to discipline yourself and save more. That's number one. Number two, start small. Now you're earning 50,000 monthly or you're earning 10,000 monthly. For instance, you're earning 10,000 monthly. I'm not saying you should start immediately to save 5,000, okay? You're going to get discouraged if you start because you're going to find it very difficult to adjust to that new change of saving so much money, okay? You can start small. 
start small and the more you get comfortable with the culture of savings you can begin to scale up gradually don't start too big it's going to be very difficult for you to adapt start small then you scale up gradually then number three automate deductions discuss with your bank if you're a salary earner discuss with your bank see as soon as my salary comes in send this money give give an order to your bank give an instruction send this money to so so and so account maybe you open another account with your bank where you don't have the atm card you don't have access to it like that so let that be like your savings account so as soon as money enters your account give an instruction to your bank to automatically send money to that other account even if you're not a salary earner you can give your bank that instruction that any amount that comes into this bank send so so and so percentage into this other account it helps you to save from the source you don't need to do it by yourself anymore everything is automated and um you know it helps you in the description below i'll discuss uh a, a way i save i'll share it with you and you can tap into it if you like there's automation in there and stuff like that it will help you to save you check the description below i have uh an information there for you regarding how i save okay now number four convert um prices into working hours i i do this a lot okay if for instance you are a salary earner and you earn for instance $50 an hour and you see something and you can't get your eyes off that thing maybe you're in the shopping mall or something and you see a handbag of $500 whilst you're looking at it and you can't get your eyes off it convert it into working hours convert it into working hours if you're on $50 an hour just look at it and say man that's 10 hours hours of hard work just for a handbag nah 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 if you can convert the price to the number of hours you work before you can get that kind of money that could you know help you to reassess and probably step back and decide to change your mind about buying that thing especially if it is not very important okay now number five do not make rash decisions don't do impulsive buying take your time take your time to think about it before you spend your money on something take your time to think about it if someone is trying to uh, talk you into buying something why don't you tell them okay give me time let me sleep over it because when you make horrid decisions nine out of ten times you'll be making a mistake so when you sleep over it you know that inspiration and idea can come into your head overnight like do i really need this thing you know you you you'll be able to think more you have more time to think nobody's pressurizing you bye 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 no you have time okay so you can make proper educated and informed decision about whether to buy or not to buy whether to spend or not to spend so give yourself time give yourself a waiting period okay now number six this is the best of all try the stranger test what is the stranger test now you walk into a phone shop and there's this beautiful iphone and you're staring at it and you ask them how much is this iphone and they're like it's one thousand dollars damn you have a phone you don't actually need that phone but you want it oh damn this phone is beautiful and in your bank account, you have $2,000. You're like, I can buy it. I can buy it. But that means I'll be spending 50% of my, of my account balance. But it doesn't matter. This phone is beautiful. I can buy it. This is the trick that can get you out of that problem. Imagine now that a stranger walked up to you, holds that phone in one hand, and holds a $1,000 note in one hand and tells you, choose one anyone you choose i'll give to you which would you choose i believe you would want to choose that one thousand dollars because it's going to mean an extra money in your bank account for you okay so if you would choose that one thousand dollars then you have the one thousand dollars already forget about the iphone okay try this it works for me a lot of times a lot of times okay now number seven of course you have to be able to differentiate between your wants and your needs 
before you buy anything, do you actually need it? Sometimes we buy some things and we don't even use them. Sometimes we buy some things and we underuse them. Sometimes we buy things, it's after we buy them, we find out that we don't really need this thing. Okay, we don't really need this thing. For me, for instance, I am not the wristwatch kind of person. That's me. That's the truth. I'm not the wristwatch kind of person. I'm not saying it's good, but I'm just telling you the kind of person I am. I'm not the wristwatch kind of person. I have a lot of wristwatches that I do not wear. Very nice ones. So back in the day before I had financial sense, I used to buy wristwatches. And I never used to uh, wear them, you know. So at some point, I told myself, come on, you don't need this thing. It's the truth, okay? You can have one or two. When occasion demands, you can wear them for fashion purposes only. But there's no point in me having 20 wristwatches when I am not a wristwatch kind of person. So I don't know what you spend your money on that you don't actually uh, need, okay? So you have to be able to differentiate between your needs and your wants. Most times... Your wants comes from your heart, okay? And your needs comes from your head because your head is very good at analyzing. So you have to differentiate what is talking to you. Is it your head that is talking to you or it's your heart, okay? You can learn it and with time, you can draw a line between your wants and your needs, okay? Then number eight, work on a budget. You can never go wrong on a budget, okay? Sit down with your spouse, sit down with your family, sit down with your fiancé, sit down with your partners, sit down with your siblings, whoever you live with, sit down with them, draw a budget, okay? Create a budget on what you guys need to spend your money for, for the month, vis-a-vis -vis your monthly income. You plan. That way, you don't just buy unnecessary things, okay? Have an emergency fund, for things that can just crop up unplanned, okay? That way you have, you can track your expenses. You can see where your money is going, okay? You're not going to be like, ah, I was just paid and all of a sudden I don't have money again. You don't get such unpleasant surprises, okay? So, well, these are eight tips uh, that will help you uh, to save better because the more money you save, the closer you are to financial freedom and when you save money you 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 don't you don't get taken by surprise you're always prepared you're like the master of the game okay so share this video with whoever you think needs to see it give it a like and let me see your comments in the comment section below till i see you next time it's bye for now